Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Matt and it is finally Maniac Monday. Yes, 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 folks. I hope each and every one of you had a fantastic weekend. Hopefully you got to get out and enjoy the weather wherever you're at. Uh, maybe watch some good movies or binge watch some series. Do whatever it is that makes you happy. Uh, I know the weather was really shitty here in Iowa. We got snow, which is, uh, it's not even November and we're already getting snow. So that's not a good sign. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a rough winter, I think. Either way, um, please do like, share, and subscribe, and I hope on top of it you're having a great morning, evening, dawn, day, or dusk as well. Uh, please uh, look in the description box for more information on the daily film, such as your brief synopsis, your starring cast, uh, the runtime of the cut I am watching, and today's one, today's film is definitely one that has suffered cuts throughout time uh, because it was part of the UK's BBFC's Video Nasties uh, uh, DPP list. Uh, uh, I think it was on section section one i believe is what this one is from but either way it's um uh part of the the original 72 that were or 72 73 that were uh, uh initially banned in the uk uh so keep that in mind um this one also is not rated so there is not going to be any of that there's some going to be some trivia on there and then there's going to be a, uh, a link for a trailer for for the scene or a link for the trailer in the movie holy smokes i I just jumbled all over myself with that one. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, now let's get on to this masterpiece. This is a very good one, and I highly recommend it to every one of my my viewers of this show. It is none other than 1981's Evil Speak, directed by Eric Weston. Yes, 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 folks. This is the masterpiece that stars Clint Howard of you know like uh, oh shoot, what did he do? He did uh, 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 Ice Cream Man. He did. <laughs> that horrible, horrible uh, House of the Dead movie, um, Gentle Ben, the TV series, uh, and then he had a reoccurring role on Andy Griffith, I believe. Uh, it, it's seen him in a bunch of other stuff here and there. The guy is a legend when it comes to the, uh, um, the cult uh, uh, horror type community. The guy has done some amazing work, and he's got a very uh, distinguished look. Oh, another one that um, automatically pops in my head that I really really like that he's in is um, uh, Rock and Roll High School very very good movie very fun kitschy kind of like uh, uh, Ramones movie it's 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 a lot of fun I, I watch it at least twice a year it's one of those that makes me feel good you know it's if I'm down in the dumps I could just throw on Rock and Roll High School ah <laughs> and look now like i said this one came out in 1981 it stars clint howard you got um rg armstrong in here robert golden armstrong himself which he's done a bunch of stuff i know him from like race with the devil uh uh good luck miss wyckoff um etc 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 um children of the corn etc etc the guy has done a, a a ton of stuff he did a bunch of old westerns and, and things Things like that. The guy has always played a gritty bad guy, or not really a bad guy, but a gritty um, uh, uh, kind of character. He never, he was kind of that gray area character, you know. And then who else do we got in here? We got Joe Joseph Cortese. Um, he plays a, uh, a, a priest, a, a military academy priest, which he has got a very interesting death. Um, if you, um, well, hold on, I'll get to that in a moment. And then we got Claude Roll Jones in here. He plays the. Uh, um, the coach to the to the soccer team of the military academy, uh, which is. Um both Clint Howard, uh, Haywood Nelson, Don Stark uh, are um, uh, all three of them are part of the the soccer squad. Which, like I said, we got Haywood Nelson, which you should know him from. Uh, oh shoot, what what was his show? Uh, not Good Times, but oh uh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Anyways, I'll get I, I it'll pop into my head. Let me see if it says it on the back of here. What's happening? 
what's happening. Yes. So he he comes fresh off of that. And then we got Don Stark, who I always know him as Bob Pinciotti from That 70s Show. Yeah. I love him in that. He is a absolutely hilarious. We got Charles Tyner in here who plays a... Uh, uh, um, a uptight kind of uh, uh, military uh, um, uh, uh, colonel. I, th I believe he's the colonel. If if that if if that's his, um, I, I believe that's what he was was a full blown colonel. But either way, um, his character he's an interesting one as well. Um, and this one, like I said, is directed by Eric Weston. It runs at an hour and 31 minutes. Um, like I said, this one has suffered over over time throughout, or suffered throughout time with cuts. Uh, um, I Like I said, it was a part of that UK BBFC video nasties list where they uh, um, persecuted a whole bunch of films. It's not just 72 or 73. It's there's, there's a whole bunch more. There's the Section 3 and Section 4 lists as well. Section 4 is... is just eh, whatever's. Uh, section three has got a lot of great stuff on there. Um, I wish people would talk a little more about section three because there's some good ones on there. Um, now, uh, as far as this release goes, this is a uh, the uh, Scream Factory Blu-ray uh, release here. It is a standard issue pressed Blu-ray. It does not have a reversible artwork, but it does give you this to look at on the inside. So you get a, uh, uh, looks like German and it looks like Japanese over here on the other side. So you get two different artworks that you can look at uh, when you open up your, your case at least. So you got that going on. Um, now, as far as special features go, this one has some good special features. It has a making of uh, of documentary called what is the name of it? Uh, shoot, I forget what the name of it is. It's something in pigs or ar severed arms and pigs or pigs and severed arms or something like that. But um, either way, it has um, uh, most of the starring cast on there, and uh, and they talk about making of of evil speed and what it was like to work with, with Clint Howard and, and everybody else. And, and uh, uh, um, there's also some uh, uh, a really nice interview with the special effects artists that did all the work on here because this thing is an ex a special effects extravaganza. You got all kinds of uh, different special effects going on here that are uh, a lot of beheadings, uh, a lot of beheadings. So keep that in mind. If you, like, if you like your movies to have a lot of heads being chopped off or, you know, this is it. Um, <clears throat> now, what else was I getting at? Oh, and then there's also, um, was it three other interviews? Um, one, two, three. Um, uh, there's one with, uh, um, uh, Oh, Clint Howard, there's one with Don Stark, which the Don Stark one is absolutely hilarious, and you should watch that one. Um, both of them are very, very good. Uh, there's one on there with, uh, oh, there's two other ones. There's, anyways, but there is also a, a audio commentary on here with the director itself. But I... I can't believe I'm already forgetting who the uh, other other two. Um, uh, Joe Cortese, and that's who it was um, that did the uh, uh, interviews. It was all three of them. They did extra interviews. They were they looked a little more. Um, uh, they looked aged. They didn't look like the modern interviews like that was in the uh, um, the making of documentary that's on here. And like I said, there's a commentary track on there as well. Uh, uh, anyways, let's move on to this movie. I've still all stuck and stumbled all over my words enough and let's go ahead and move on in it's basically about uh, Clint Her Howard plays this character named um, uh, Stanley Cooper Smith and Stanley is um, one of those kids he's like he's got a really really bright mind he's he's um, got a successful future ahead of him if he can if he can keep himself out of trouble uh uh you know do as what he's basically been told um it basically goes over the fact that he's being bullied by by uh Don Stark and all of his buddies um bullied to the point to where they they are throwing his hat out of window where he's got to go fetch it from from uh uh where it's at in front of sprinklers uh 
Um, they they kill his dog, which is absolutely the worst thing you can do. Uh, I you know like why kill the dog? Um, uh, you get you get no satisfaction from that other than or for at. I would feel as a bad guy, you get no satisfaction from doing that. I think that's just wrong in every kind of way. Um, but then again, that that shows you the level of madness that these guys were were going on because it's it's all set in this military academy, this prestigious military academy, where these these uh, um, uh, 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 kids are are definitely um, privileged. I would say they have some money behind them, or at least uh, uh, a lot of uh, family support and things of that nature. Because uh, our, our good old uh, um, Clint Howard does not have parents. His parents both died in a horrible car accident. So he is um, uh, all alone, essentially, in this world with him, himself, and this dog that that is given to him by this very nice cook who is actually played by the, the fellow that played Luca Brazzi in the Godfather film. Uh, who who is now deceased? I forget exactly what his name was, but uh, yes, as Don Stark says in in his uh, interview on here, he truly sleeps with the fishes now. <laughs> Which is, you know, Don Stark's interview is worth the price of admission alone, in my opinion. Uh, it is very, very, very good. Um, so you got these privileged kids that are are got all this uh, um, stuff going on and they're, they're bullying our poor old kid Stanley Cooper Smith played by Clint Howard. Uh, Clint Howard happens to... Um, one of his punishments, uh, because he's constantly getting getting punished by the uh, the the authorities, the brass, uh, basically because every time they they come across him, he's in some sort of precarious position. Uh, like one time they they catch him and he's uh, laying face down on the ground, uh, completely dirty, got his pants down to his ankles. Uh, the uh, uh, Don Stark and his buddies they decided uh, Bubba is his name, Don. Stark's character, Bubba and his and his pals decide they're going to uh, beat the hell out of him and pull his pants off and and uh, harass him in front of these two girls as as he was trying to talk to this one because he thought she was uh, because they were having a contest called the Miss Heavy Artillery Contest. Yes, folks, that's what I said, the Miss Heavy Artillery Contest, uh, which um, if I was going to go by a uh, um, uh, uh, stereotype on it, I wouldn't have guessed these girls to have heavy artillery because they really don't. If they, if you get what I'm saying, oh. <laughs> uh, I would have thought they would have been bigger in certain places. Anyways, um, but uh, he he tries to get up on this girl, not get on her. She he's just trying to talk to her and tell her, you know, I thought you were better. You should have won this and that, and be just trying to be to be a sweet guy. Uh, she goes to hand him a, a joint, and that's when Bubba and his friends come popping in and they they harass him and uh, oh, you're benched because you've been smoking pot, and then um, he gets himself kicked off to the team in the process. Um, at one point, like I said, they throw his hat out of this window. He has to go fetch it. They're when they finally one of the the position precarious position they see him in there is when he comes back. He is completely drenched in and just looks like complete hell. You know, he's he's constantly um, dirty and 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 sweaty and. Um, his hair is always in a mess, which, by the way, Clint Howard talks about in his interview that he had a, a little hair piece that he had to purchase on his own to wear at the very big, at very front of his head because because the uh, that was the one thing that was holding him up from the part was the fact that he had a very bad receding hairline already, and he was very, very young. I believe he was only like 21 years old, 22 years old when he had made this, so he was not very old old at all <laughs> he poor guy was it has uh been that whole the howard family has been cursed what the me, howard family men have been cursed when it comes to receding hairlines oh my gosh that rants uh ron and clint yowzers guys i'm sorry that is sad anyways but you guys rock it <laughs> but um 
Cooper Smith finds this. What happens is he finds this uh, 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 temple, basically under the ch- there, this uh, um, cathedral that's under this chapel th- that has a uh, a tomb inside of it, which happens to belong to this Esteban character played by uh, Richard Mall, which you should know him from like Night Court and House and uh, a bunch of other stuff. But I re- I remember him mostly from Night Court and House. Um, uh, the William Cat movie, very good movie. But anyways, uh, um, uh, he finds this 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 uh, uh, tomb, and in in it he finds this book, and it is all stuff to summon satanic witchcraft. And so he's basically he's trying to summon the devil to to uh, um, basically get revenge on these guys that have been tormenting him all through this um, prestigious military academy. And and it definitely um, you have a very very gruesome fun uh, uh, last twenty minutes of the film. It, it gets very um, very good. I mean, this one is good from beginning to end. I'm not gonna lie. I do I do suggest this one uh, highly. Um, so basically, that's what it's about: is a kid, a poor kid that is stuck in a prestigious school that is bullied consistently. Who and then he in his in his spare time he is um being punished to to the point to where they're making him clean this cellar and that's where he finds this 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 hidden room that has this tomb down inside of it and so he is essentially trying to summon the devil and and get revenge that is a hundred percent what it's about um and along the way bad things happen to him like his dog gets killed um he's con i mean it's the the dog is enough to be like okay guys that's that's too much um um, let's kill them. And they all have great deaths. Extended, long, bloody, gory deaths, that is. And there's also this weird secretary in it that uh, at one point steals uh, poor Stanley Cooper Smith's book. And she's trying to pry off the, uh, uh, the, the emblem off of the cover, which um, in turn invokes these people these hogs, these boars, to come in, they, they, somehow she lives close enough to them to where, uh, they're able to not only chew through the fence where they are located at, but they are also able to, um, get into her house, and while she is, is having, uh, a shower scene, by the way, um, uh, you know, it was one of those things like, uh, let's throw a shower scene in here, kind of ordeals. Let's let's appease the uh, the deviants in the in the uh, the crowd. <laughs> let's let's please Matthew Brown. Um, anyways, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It wasn't that good of a shower scene. But anyways, it, it got cool because the pigs came in and ate her. Um, you can tell that they are very they were fake pigs in in those moments. It's very very silly and funny uh, and hokey. Um, there's unintentional laughs in here, which is great. I and there's also intentional laughs as well. All right, guys. Now, as far as any kind of ratings would go on this thing, on a technical side, I'm going to say this is probably like a four out of five. Uh, it's a very good start for the week, in my opinion. Um, this week, I'm thinking I'm going to do nothing but video nasties because uh, I already got three of them lined up, and they all happen to be video nasties. And I thought, why the hell not? Let's make all five movies this week video nasties. And we'll start off with one of my favorites with this one. So um, a four out of five on the technical side because there is some great camera sh- camera angles. Uh, there's some really cool uh, early like uh, special effects, like digital effects going on with the computers uh, because you know this is 1981. This is way before um, time, but computers were were really uh, uh, a thing that people talked about. You know, this is 30 years ahead of its time. Uh, so so keep that in mind. This is is a pioneer when it comes to that 
Uh, and then there's, you know, you got the great acting in there. You got a very fun story that works. Um, the the momentum never goes in the wrong direction. It always stays a nice steady pe steady pace. Um, keeps you uh, 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 in entertained throughout the entire film. I I never once found myself like grabbing my phone and looking at it because that's usually how I judge judge it. If I if I pick my phone up a lot and, and I'm chances are I'm on there more. Than watching the movie, the movie sucks. Or at least to me, it does. Um, <laughs> but now, like onto that entertaining side, this thing's a four out of five. This is like a seven or an eight out of ten kind of movie. It's a uh, uh, just amazing story. I I absolutely love it. It, it works from beginning to end. All right, guys, I've said enough about this. I I've I've repeated myself as usual. I'm going to put this one down. I'm going to get the hell out of here. I got a weird one up for you tomorrow. It's got kind of a... Um, uh, which, by the way, before I end, this one kind of has a carry vibe. That's one of the things they bring, bring up in the special features I really like. It does have a carry vibe in it. Anyways, but tomorrow I got a really weird one for you. All right, guys. Love your faces, and I'll see you then.